chapter 11, verse 17 in your Bibles. We're talking about the church tonight. Now, we're blessed. And, and I, I know I try to celebrate. And I think it's important to celebrate things like I do. If you notice on Sunday morning, if anything's taking place over the week or the weekend, I try to share that with you and have a time of celebration. I believe that's important that we celebrate because uh, Christian walk is hard sometimes. Uh, and to know that God is working in people's lives and things are happening, what a blessing that is. Uh, and, and you're known to be a friendly church, but you know, when I, when I think about it, what if everybody in the church was just like you? Now, you makes up a lot of different people, amen? But what if everybody, in the, and I know the church can't be that way. We're all different. We're all members. But as we go through this, we also have to remember that the church is what we make it. A lot of times people will go visit a church and say, well, didn't really do nothing for me. I just waited there. I was waiting for something. You know, a lot of people expect that. They want to they be blessed. They want to be entertained. Uh, and the church is what you make it. And the Lord was not happy. The temple, when Jesus walked upon the earth, the temple was more of a picture of the church. Now, the church is different in the age of the New Testament and how we worship and, and think about the Lord and what He's done. But let's go back to Mark chapter 11. Look in verse 15. Mark chapter 11, verse 15. And they came to Jerusalem. Jesus went into the temple, began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple, overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves. Now, they were not treating the temple properly, okay? For instance, they were selling offerings, doves, but the doves had disease or they had blemish or the other sacrifices. They weren't selling the best. And they upped the price. They upped the price to make a, a profit. It was not as a service. It was to make money. It was more about the money that they would make. And so Jesus comes in, and here they are in the temple, not using the temple the proper way. And verse 16 said... And would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, it, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? But ye have made it a den of thieves. Wow. My house should be known as a house of prayer. I'll be honest with you today, prayer is probably not offered up enough in the church today as it should be. A lot of people don't want to come to a prayer meeting. I've been doing this 29 years now. The smallest services I've had as a pastor is when I've tried to have prayer services. Like prayer services for revival. Prayer services for the church. For whatever reason, well, I can do that at home. I don't have to do it. But, and, and that statement is true. But Jesus said that my house should be known as a house of prayer, but it's known as a den of thieves. Sometime in the picture today, churches are becoming known for performance-based music, not participatory, where the congregation participates, but where everything is done on stage, and it's more like a concert style. Uh, turn the lights down, roll the fog, get the lights going, and watch a concert that's taking place. And we're not even participating in the worship. Things have changed. I'm not sure God would be proud of changes that's taking place in his house. So tonight I'm talking to you about the church. The temple was what they had made it. It was a den of thieves, not because it was made that way by the forefathers, but those people attending, the leaders, had made it a den of thieves, either by those who sold or those who bought, and it was permitted, and they were doing it for 
for the wrong reason. I don't know about you, but if man's involved, we have a tendency to do things toward a secular and evil side. That's men. That's mankind. We incline toward the bad. Whether it's religious, moral, social, political, economic, for whatever reason, we have to watch that. Man deteriorates things. We degrade everything that we touch unless our actions are checked and held in check by God. A lot of times people come and say, Pastor, do you think it's okay if we do this at the church? One of my questions would be, what's the Bible say about it? What's God say about it? Does it lift up the name of Jesus? Does it glorify the Lord's name? We'll do things. Not, not too long ago, I remember Clint talked to me about that guy that came last. I think he was called the crazy tie guy, if I remember correctly. And he did some things. But if you watched him, he had a wonderful message about the gospel. He had a wonderful message in, in, in sharing with us. So, so, you know, what we saw was, oh, yeah, it was a little different. You know, they did some juggling. He had the weirdest tie I've ever seen in my life. You know, I'd like to have one of those probably one day. He had a lot of, but guess what? It was lifting up. His family was involved. He was glorifying the name of Jesus. He was lifting up the name of Jesus. And that's how we should check everything we do in the church does it glorify the Lord songs that we sing ought to glorify the Lord if it doesn't glorify the Lord we ought not sing it it don't matter how popular it is it doesn't matter how old it is if it doesn't glorify the Lord we ought not sing it I mean don't matter the material we use it ought to glorify the Lord if it don't glorify the Lord we ought not have it Everything we do should glorify God. Every activity should be geared to glorifying the Lord. Everything. There I was yesterday. I'm praising you for serving. I came home and a question I asked as I came home from us serving yesterday at Breaking Bread. Was there enough personal touch with those people that came into Breaking Bread? That's one of the questions I was asking myself. Was there enough walking side by side, talking to them? I'm Brother Gary. I'm pastor of Olive Branch. Or I'm Clint Brame. I'm, I'm the Minister of Education Associate Pastor, Olive Branch. I'm Jonathan Harrelson. I'm the youth pastor. You talking to the people as, as we're walking and serving. I ask that question. Now, sure, we had prayer. We had a Bible study. And I believe the name of God was lifted up and glorified. But that was a question I began to, to wonder about. What can be tweaked to make it better as you make that personal contact? Because you and I know it makes a difference when you make a personal contact. Roger Burke, you made a personal contact. I believe it's a year ago or two years ago. You made a personal year ago with that man. And you've helped him, and the church has helped. There's been different things that you've done. And, and there was a personal contact made. What a glorious thing. See, that's why things should be done. Uh, the tendency of us is to do things in a secular way. But we need to see. Uh, somebody asked me. We are going to give uh, folks an opportunity to give through the kiosk. And somebody said, I'm, I'm just not sure if I'm comfortable with that. Well, it's just electronic giving. We saw $400 come in today through the kiosk in giving of, of the machine. Now, some of us would say, I'm not, I don't like that. Why don't they just write a check? Well, they don't have a check. They don't have a check book. They don't do things like we do. So if we bring this in and we do it, if it allows somebody to give that hadn't been giving, is that glorifying the Lord? Is that uplifting the name of Jesus? I say yes. I believe those things that we offer, those are that's kind of like putting bathrooms in the church instead of using the outhouse. Now, I know that we all have difference of opinion. That's like putting electricity. That's like putting heating and cooling. Things change through time. And if you've got folks coming up in their 20s that they do everything this way, and the church says, no, we're not going to do that, you've got to bring a check. And if you don't bring a check, you can't give. That's wrong. 
That's not the right attitude for the church. Because what's the church need to do? Move in the direction of everything that glorifies the Lord. Now I'm getting into this, but I'm just trying to talk about we've got to be careful. Now, what is the church? And, and what we're here for. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to kind of skip some things and get right into this tonight talking about it. Is the church spiritual or unspiritual? Because it, the church is what you make it. I'm very proud to say that we've got some great Bible teachers at Olive Branch. We've got some folks here that study the Word of God. We've got folks here that read their Bible every day. We have grown in our devotions in passing out to people in the congregation. Why? More people are in the Word of God. More people are studying. We've, uh, in the last two years... We've doubled and almost went up another half times the women's devotionals that we give away back there on the wall. About two years ago, we was getting about 10 or 12 of those. I think we're up to giving out 35 to 40 of those, somewhere in that range of ladies. And I'm watching Facebook, and, and I'll, I'll see some of these people post a picture of, look what my devotion said this morning. And guess what book it is? It's that book that I'm talking about. And they'll talk about, and they're showing that so somebody else will see what God said to them. I, I don't know about you, but the church is what you make it. And, and I'm thankful that we are trying to teach the Word of God. And we're trying to teach our church to be a spiritual church. One thing that I believe there's a lack of in our church is prayer. I believe we pray as individuals, but I'm not sure we're praying enough. Sometimes I feel like that's something we just kind of hit the surface of up here on the top. I know I asked you a month ago to help me find... You remember I asked you a month ago to help me find something, or two months ago, something like that. I said, help me find or help people find Peyton a wheelchair. Man, we've been hitting walls and obstacles along the way. Do you know why I think we found that wheelchair? Prayer. I believe we found it because of prayer. I believe that God opened up that door and we found that because we as a church got together and we began to pray specifically for that. I believe something that's missing in the church is, is prayer. Dependence on the Holy Spirit's leadership. Oh, how we need to let the Holy Spirit lead us in everything we do. I fail at that. David Orange was trying to give you a testimony this morning about how he failed to listen to the Holy Spirit last Sunday morning. I'll be honest, I failed last night at 10.30 to listen to the Holy Spirit. You did? Yes, I did. I was going through my notes. I was making other notes. And, and you may not realize sometimes I can't find the scriptures fast enough. So I don't have it with me tonight. But I sit there and I'm not smart enough to take a computer and paste and copy. So I write down the scripture verses I'm using in my sermon. And I put them down. I was doing that last night. So I wouldn't have to wait for the screen. I wouldn't have to turn to all those in the Bible. And I could just read those to you and just keep preaching. While I was doing it, God laid on my heart. There's a song, Gary. I know my Redeemer liveth. So I reached and got my phone and I started Googling. There's actually an older song and then there's this one. And, and I started listening to them last night. 10, 10, 30 at night. I looked around at Lori and I said, Lori, somebody sings this song at church. Well, you know, there's a limited number of people so, you know, you only got a, like a pool to choose from. So we was trying to decide if Ronna sung it, if Kelly sung it, if Jamie sung it. We was trying to decide who sung it. And I said, man, it's 1030 at night. I need this song sung tomorrow. You know, this goes right with the message. It goes right. I don't know why I didn't get it before now. But, man, I just think this message is powerful with this song. And, and so I didn't call nobody. I just Googled it, got it, took it to media, had them play it today. All right? But I got home and Kelly Cessna sends me a message. I've been singing this song all day. I haven't sung this song in years. So I know who sings the song. 
I said, girl, at 1030 last night, I was trying to decide what to do. She said, I sure wish you would have contacted me. I would have sung it today. By the way, she's going to sing it next Sunday, I believe. She said, I, I, I'm singing it all day. It's just been in bed in my mind. I hadn't sung it in years. See, sometimes we don't let the Holy Spirit lead us when we should. We fail. Your pastor fails in that. You may not think this is a big thing, but we never know what God's going to use. We never know how He's going to use it. We need to be a Holy Spirit-led church. You don't have to go by the bulletin. Exactly. All right? I believe in structure, but I believe in Holy Spirit-led. And if God changes it, change it. I believe that's important. I'll be honest, I'm afraid today, sometimes in the church, we're more about going what we got instead of letting the Holy Spirit lead. So I believe prayer and that power of the Holy Spirit is something that's missing in the church today. Uh, how about a lazy church? Do you have a lazy church? I don't believe we have a lazy church. There may be some people, but there's, there's places I go and they'll get out the Sunday school book and this just drives me. If you do it, change. Drives me crazy. Go to Sunday school. I'll visit. A couple times a year, I'll visit another church. I'll go in Sunday school, and they'll say, we're on page 83 today. So you open up to 83, and I'm, I'm ready. You know, I'm a Sunday school fellow. I've been in Sunday school my whole life. And by the way, pastors need to go to Sunday school, and that's why I go to Sunday school, and that's why I teach Sunday school. But I am a minority. <clears throat> The revivals I go to, I ask the pastor which class I can go to. Well, I don't go to Sunday school. Well, you know your pastor well enough. I say, well, you ought to. <laughs> which class do I go to? Because I'm going to go to Sunday school. If you want to stay in here, you can, but I'm going to go to Sunday school. So you know what he usually does? Goes with me. I tell him it's a good time to start. When you get up here doing this 29, 30 years, you can do some of that stuff. You know? I mean, it's like, why aren't you in Sunday school? I told my son several years ago. Well, it's not been several, about four years ago. Talked to him and said, what Sunday school class are you in? Well, I do this. I said, that's wrong. You ought to be in Sunday school on Sunday morning. You're the pastor of the church. You're the leader of the church. You're number one. You ought to be in Sunday school. I believe that. And every once in a while now, I ask him, are you in Sunday school? But here's what I don't like. Because this shows to me sometimes we're just lazy. I hate it when somebody says, all right, turn to page 83. We're at the top of the page. Love is one of the most common themes found in music, literature, and film. Arguably, there's an angle of love in nearly every story. Whether it's desire for love, the loss of love, or complicated love. Love is a common human experience. We love family and friends. And by the way, I'm reading that better than they are. I'm reading it with a little bit of up and down and a little bit of passion in there. And we search for that true love with whom we can share our lives. What song, movie, or book comes to your mind when you think about the topic of love? And you know how many people we got in churches across this nation that open up a book and read it word for word, teaching a lesson? That is not how to teach a Sunday school lesson. That's not how to teach a Sunday school lesson. A taught Sunday school lesson is a man or woman that has been in this material, studying it, and can stand there. Listen, I usually teach the lesson before I even get the book open. Those in class can tell you, if I ever stand up and start talking, they're in trouble. Because I usually go through the lesson before I even open the book. And then I'll say, okay, now let's look and see what the Scripture says. Because I've done walk through it. Why? Because I've done been in it through the week, and I'm trying to regurgitate it to the people. That's very important that we do. And I'll tell you something, you, people may not like it, but that's a lazy teacher that just wants to open up the book and read the book. We don't need laziness in the church. We don't need laziness in, in sharing our faith. We need not to be lazy. We need to be excited about God. We need to come in to church excited about church. We, we, praise God we're not a songless church. Praise God we love to sing. But I'm going to be honest with you. More people need to sing when we sing. Don't just stand there. Well, I don't know this song. I don't know half of them. I didn't know the offertory song today. 
That's an old one and I didn't know it. Mil Mildred on Wednesday at noon has been teaching me new songs. She'll pick out three or four. I only get two of them basically. She ages me just a little bit, just a little bit. And and so she's getting these songs and but I'll sing and I'll say, play it for me, play it for me. She'll play it for me. I go, I remember it. I remember it by, by sound. But you know what? That doesn't stop me from singing the song, does it? That doesn't stop me from, from moving my lips and praising God. We need to be a singing church. We need to be a worshiping church. And we need to be a church that's alive. Whenever people come, they need to leave here and go, man, I felt welcome at that church. They, they made me feel comfortable. I wonder if the church is a doctrinally weak church, spiritually ignorant church. Too many either don't care anymore or they think already know enough. They don't think anyone can teach them anything. I don't know about you, but I can be taught something every day. And I'll be honest with you. I don't know how you know or pay attention. I know my stories are repetition, but my sermons are not repetition. My Sunday morning stories, I'm fresh and I've never preached it before. My stories may come out repetitious, but when I'm in the Word, you can go to the attic and find all my sermons from New Hope put away in the attic. You can find my sermons from Olive Branch already filed away. I believe that the pastor ought to be fresh. I believe that the pastor ought to study and get in the Word of God and bring that. And I know I may not be fired up every Sunday, but I believe that I should be prayed up and studied up that you can tell a difference in the pastor's messages. Because I believe that affects you, what comes from here. God help us that we're a doctrinally sound church and a spiritually sound church and we care. I mean, we got a lot of churches today poorly attended. I don't know if you realize what's happening out there in our associations. Here at, here at uh, Little Bethel, we've got somewhere around eight or nine churches that are running under 15 people on Sunday morning. Ohio County, the director of missions, a personal friend of mine. I eat lunch with him about once a month. He said, Brother Gary, I've got 12 to 13 churches that are absolutely barely holding their doors open. They're poorly attended. Can't hardly get somebody to step in the pulpit. What's wrong? What's going on? Are we faithful? I'm not even sure. You know, we look around. Thank God for you being here tonight. It's Sunday night. But what's wrong with Sunday night attendance? There's half here today or a little less than what was here this morning. What's happened to Sunday night church? Well, pastor, we've got to get the kids ready for bed. I, I hear that a lot. Or we've got the week, you know, we're getting ready for the week. We didn't get home in time. I know there's a lot going on. I realize it's a different generation. I'm not sure I understand it. Lord, how many kids did we raise? Have I forgot? Two. Two. Did you get my help getting them ready for school the next day? No. Oh, no. <laughs> so you got the kids ready for school the next day without my assistance? Yeah. And did we miss any Sunday nights? What? No. Oh, but I'm paid. I'm the pastor. Would that make a difference? My daddy wasn't paid. He was there. Where's our families? A lot of excuses, a lot of things. Why, why, are we, why are our churches poorly attended? I'm not sure. I know we've got busy families. There may be part of the problem. We may be too busy of families out there in the secular world. We may be doing too much extracurricular things in the world today. That may be what's affecting us. But I wonder, is your church poorly attended? Uh, are we making the effort to be there and be a part of what's going on? God help us. What about, you know, when you think about the church, I thank God for our church. I thank God for your faithfulness in the Word of God. I thank God for your faithfulness in giving. I thank God for your faithfulness in, in loving on people. And I thank God for your faithfulness in making folks feel welcome at Olive Branch. Your church is what you make it. We ought to make it a house of prayer. We ought to come together to pray. 
Is the church on fire for God? I brought up to the Wednesday night crowd that I was burdened about salvations. Thank God He gave us one this week. Amen. Praise God for that. But I have been. Listen. Is the services cold? Are they too formal? Are they too ceremonial? All we get is a shell of religion without the Spirit of God. God help us that the church would be on fire for God, on fire for lost people. Can't have a cold church and cold members and a hot church. See a, a mathematical formula. Can't have a cold church, a cold preacher, I said cold church, and a cold members, a cold preacher to equal a hot church. No, you can't have a hot preacher with a cold church. You, you just can't do it. What, what's got to happen? you got to have the pastor that is excited about the Word of God, preaching the Word of God, standing on the Word of God, and the church that wants to receive the Word of God. God will bless that. We need to be morally and spiritually clean. We must be submissive to God's will, willing to let God have His way and lead in all things of our life. We must be in good fellowship with God. We must be in good fellowship with each other. We must have a, a forgiving spirit, not hold any grudges or ill feelings. We must have brotherly love, love for others, and desire to be in others' company. You know, I think it's a wonderful thing to watch our people just go out and be together. The Word of God must be preached. The Word of God must be honored in doctrine and practice. We must have the atmosphere of humility. You know, I believe one of the great things is is that we make sure when people come and visit Olive Branch, they don't think we're too haughty or we don't think we're better than somebody. They go, man, they just welcomed me. What kind of church do we have? Have a, church, a spirit of enthusiasm. Now, I know you don't have to come to church every Sunday with a smile on your face, laughing when you come in the door, because y'all just had a big fight riding to church, you know. So I know you don't always come in happy, you know. I think that's why some of you drop the other one off at the door and go park and then come. You know, I'm not sure, but I wonder about that. But I always can find out if I just ask the kids. <laughs> How'd mom and daddy do in the car? Oh, they were screaming at each other. Daddy couldn't find his belt, and he, br he blamed mama. Boy, that daddy, this happened to daddy, and daddy was blaming mama. Mama was blaming daddy. He, he was asleep, and he wouldn't get up and make us breakfast. And mama had to make us breakfast and get us ready, too. Daddy was supposed to get me ready, but he never did. That sounds like Chris Taylor right there. Yeah. Do we have a spirit of enthusiasm, a spirit of eagerness, fervency? I had a young family text me last night. They apologize. I'm sorry I'm bothering you. Look at me, church. Look at me. You're not bothering me. I'm your pastor. Text me. Call me. They texted me last night and said, Brother Gary, where does the fifth grade class go? Where are they at and who's the teacher? I automatically knew why they was bringing somebody with them. And sure enough, they walked in here today with the mother and the kids with them. And they stopped and they said, remind us. So we don't want to get the phone out and look at it. And I told them exactly where to go. Somebody no one know where the second grade class was at today. Or first grade. And, and so I, I took that child upstairs. Oh, what a wonderful thing that they care enough to, to check that out and to bring somebody with them. We ought to have that strong excitement of feelings. God said, don't make my house a den of thieves. Don't make my house something that's not comfortable for other people to come to. Make it a house of prayer. Go all out. <clears throat> I, I know that we get involved in technical issues. Uh, there's a church in Frankfort, Kentucky called Buck Run. Buck Run Baptist Church. Buck Run Baptist Church is right there close to Frankfort. They actually were located in Frankfort and they've just built a new church. A lot of people would not like the thoughts and the things that they did, but they had a plan behind the design of the front of the church. Some of you like it, some of you won't. The pastor is solid in the Word of God. He was one of my preaching professors that I had in class. And uh, they designed the outside of the building to look like a Cabela's. Cabela's men's sporting goods. 
Does anybody have any idea why a church would design the front of the building to have a look like Cabela's Sporting Goods? What? Get men to be comfortable coming to that place. We're living in an age where things are different. I know that church planning is going on and some of us go, there's enough churches in Hopkins County. And you know, and I would almost agree with you, but when I know eight or nine of them's fixing to shut their doors because nobody's going, but yet all the people's out there, there's a problem. Some of the problems is tradi traditionalism. Like all the people living on Olive Branch Church Road, why do they not attend Olive Branch Baptist Church? Some of them is because something that happened 30 years ago. And we broke that barrier a year and a half ago with one of those families with a funeral and cancer and visiting them and praying over them. But we can go to family after family. Well, I'm not going to go there. My grandma went there and they had a problem. And these things continue to go. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be that kind of church. I want to be a kind of church that breaks through those things. I want to be the kind of church that people said, I want to go there. I feel the Spirit of God there. There's preaching of the Word of God there. They sing old songs. They sing new songs. And they love Jesus. I can feel it when I'm there. Me and my kids like to go to children's church. My kids like to go to Awana class. The people make them feel comfortable and they learn about Jesus while they're there. And my kids want to go back. That's the kind of church I want to have. When you know the Word of God's being taught in class, and we know the people of the body are reaching out to others. Our church should be one of the most exciting things in our life, not the most boringest thing in our life. Our church ought to be our family. It ought to be important. It ought to be part of our home. I said to the Dickersons when they came down today, I did not just want to be their preacher. I said to them that I've said to others, I want to be your pastor. I want to be involved in your life. I want to know what's going on in your life. Anybody can preach. But we need a church that loves each other. A church that reaches out to others. Don't let us become a house of den of thieves. Let us be a house of prayer. Let the love of Jesus flow from our body. Now, I know we may not need this tonight. You may say, preacher, we got a great church. Well, I feel we do, but we got to be careful. And we got to guard against the devil because he's standing at the door ready to break it down. Because what he wants to see is a church not going forward for the glory of God. He'd rather see it closed. And that image portrayed. Let's not have that image. What's the church like to you? The church is what you make it. What are you making the church? See, that's why it's so important for everybody to serve. I don't have to stand at the door and greet people on Sunday morning. There's other people greeting people. You know, think about it. What are you doing? What could you do different? How could you improve in the church and church life? I pray God will bless us all as we seek that out in our heart and in our life, as we seek that out with our own self. Father, bless our time together tonight. A time that we've talked about the church. Lord, I know we've got a great place, but Father, if we'll just continue to grow spiritually and follow your word to be the church that you want us to be. You bless Olive Branch. Bless our decisions. May we go out this week into the mission field and love others as Jesus would. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.